Welcome back. So there's been a great talk about uh, what happened yesterday at Kaswa. Honorable Howard comes in the mix and had admission that she shot uh, the gun. Well, there are 12 rules for safe gun handling, and I quickly want to run you through them. Number one, it says that always treat the gun as loaded. Number two, always keep the gun pointed in a safe direction. Number three, always keep your finger straight and off the trigger until you are ready to shoot. Number four, always keep the gun uh, unloaded until you're ready to use it. Number five, never point the gun at anything you don't intend to destroy. Number six, be sure of your target and what is beyond it. Number seven, learn the mechanical and handling characteristics of the gun you're using. And uh, number eight, always, uh, number eight, always be sure uh, or use proper ammunition. Number nine, be sure your the barrel is clear of obstructions before loading and shooting number 10 if your gun fails to fire when the trigger is pulled hold your shooting position for several seconds then with the muzzle pointed in a safe direction carefully unload the gun number 11 don't rely on the gun's safety to keep it from firing and number 12 be aware of your surroundings when handling guns so you don't trip or lose your balance and accidentally point or fire the gun at anyone or anything. So those are the 12 golden rules for safe gun handling. And anybody who has a gun, um, anybody who has a gun would know at this point that this is what it is and how to handle a gun, the rules of handling a gun right there on TV3 New Day. And I've been joined via Zoom by uh, two gentlemen, the Honorable um, Fusein Isa is the MP for uh, Okai Kwe North, and also Sami Jemfi is joining us as the National Communications Director of the NDC. Gentlemen, welcome. Uh, thank you. Fuseni, how are you doing? Ah, very well, my brother. How are you doing, too? Alive and well. Congratulations. Uh, we haven't met since your primaries ended. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Great. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you, Anastasia. Let me say a good morning to your viewers this morning. Mm, great. Sam, how are you doing? Good morning. Uh, by God's grace, I'm, I'm doing good, Johnny. Okay. Uh, I see rescue mission on your chest with a Ghana flag. Is it a new um, uh, Ghana celebration of the year of return? <laughs> not at all. This is not the, uh, a celebration of the year of return. Uh, it is an indication that the battle to rescue our beloved country from the hands of oppressors, the hands of those who seek to impose their will on the people unjustly, mm. the hands of the inept, insensitive, and the corrupt Ekufuado government. This rescue mission, we be which began a couple of months ago, Johnny, is on. We are making progress. And we have the conviction and the hope that as the Lord liveth, come 7 December 2020, we will vote out this oppressive, corrupt, nepotistic, and insensitive Agufuado government and bring in a new mm -hmm. president and a vice president who have integrity, who have honor, who have humility, and who have the right vision and competence to transform this country, create the needed jobs for the people, and prosperity for all, and not a select few. That is why I am wearing this rescue mission T-shirt. Mm. I have one for you. It is not political. You, can see the Ghana colors. you understand? I have one for you because this is a movement, and it's a movement being led by young people from diverse backgrounds, different political persuasions who believe that the direction this country is heading into is not good for the nation, it is not good for our future, and that we owe it a duty to God and country to come together, work hard, and restore the dignity the high office of president and vice president has lost mm. in the last three and a half years. And oh. more importantly, mm. restore our beloved Ghana back to the path of development, inclusivity, and true progress. Thank you. I, I like black shirts, but I would like a plain black shirt so I can write one Ghana 
uh, on the front. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, Chemaun to me <laughs> says, is a movement is stronger than apartheid. Anyway, uh, Fuseni, is, <laughs> is there anything to rescue the people from, as Sami says? Um, good morning again, Johnny, and a good morning to your viewers. A good morning to Sami. Um, I can Fuseni, you need, you need to look into your phone for me. Wow. Uh, well, Fuseni, you may have to reconnect so that I can I can get a clean feed for, for right. you. Is it better now? Yes, it's better now. You you'd have to center your body Hello? a bit for me. So look straight. Is it better now? Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you, but uh, you are tilted towards one side of your phone. Yes, it's better now. So I'm asking, is there anything to rescue the people from Asami Jemfi says that there's no honor and dignity that has uh, been put on the office of the presidency and vice presidency? You have denigrated it. There's corruption all over. And that is why the rescue mission is important. What do you say? Um, I want to tell Asami this morning that um, he's, he's um, three and a half years late because the rescue mission was actually completed in December 2016 on the 7th of December 2016. And if he is now joining the, the rescue mission, then he's three and a half, over three and a half years late. And this country was actually saved from uh, the inept and incompetent governor, government of um, um, John Graham, Mani Muhammad, and then the late um, Mr. Arthur. We knew where this, this, this country was. This was a, a, an economy in abyss, an economy that was not growing, an economy that was, that was uh, latent with, with unemployment, an economy that had no hope, no hope. A government that showed that in terms of crisis, they had no idea. Mm -hmm. And so they took us through four or five years of doom. So this is a government that was incompetent and that the rescue mission, which he is talking about today, I want to tell him that he is over three and a half years late and he should join he should join the competent team to take Ghana to the promised land. Today we have brought respect and honor the presidency of this nation. Mm. We have a president who is quoted globally in terms of global crisis okay. that we are experiencing today. And that is why we are we are using technology today and not being in your studios. And so he is over three and a half years late. Thank you. Thank you, Johnny. Thank you. No, no. Let, let me let me introduce uh, no, the headlines. No, no. Let me introduce the headlines. No, These no, are just Johnny, preliminary just, comments. Just, just, just a small line. Just a small line. You see, it is obvious that our brothers in the MPP, like Honorable Fuseni, are living in a different world, far removed from the realities we are all going through. Because clearly, if Honorable Fuseni was one of the thousands of customers who have had their life savings locked up in collapsed financial institutions, savings and loans, microfinance and banks, he will identify with the rescue mission I am talking about. Okay. If he was a farmer. The rescue mission was to make this financial Thank you. Financial Thank you. Financial okay, okay. gentlemen, I'm muting your I'm muting your microphones. Okay, I'm muting your microphones. Thank you. So I can do the headlines. Grateful. Uh, thank you to Zoom. Uh, the FIDA newspaper says, John Boydu tours registration centers in the Eastern region. Long queue at registra Registrar General's department and accidents, 1,141 killed in six months. It represents 8.79% decrease. Motorcycles alone killed 440 people. Also, the Electoral Commission is condemning violence at some registration centers. And COVID-19 recovery rates, not an excuse to be reckless, upon Kruba says so. The Daily Guide this morning says, Obinim Saints revealed in court 6,000 workers paid 50% bonus. Election 2020, Nana will beat Mahama, says EIU report. And also, the BNFT this morning reports that... OT landfill uh, on course to be turned into modern waste treatment facility. Also, falling share prices, open opportunity for investors, according to a report there on the front page. And let me say quickly, a happy birthday to Mr. Jones Atukwefio Jr. Uh, and also to your mother, Sophia Nanka Bruce Atukwefio Jr. It's your birthday today, mother and, and uh, son. But Fuseni, let me begin with you. Um, I'm sure you've seen the Honorable Howard Kumsin's video and uh, the conversation around it, her admission that she pulled a gun at a registration center. Quickly, there have been calls by security experts. I remember Adam Bona, I remember uh, Adib Sani, I remember Professor Enin, all calling and asking the president to sack her 
before noon or at noon today so that it sent a strong signal. There have been calls on the police to prosecute her so that it sends a strong signal for those who may want to follow it. These are just dress rehearsals for December 7. Is there cause to worry? Are the calls justified? You may have to bring back your sound for me. Zaini, you may have to bring your sound back for me. Okay, let, let me, let me. Fuseni, can you hear Hello. me? I can hear you. Great, so you're live now. Can you hear me? I can hear you, you're live, in, you're live right. on air. Right, okay. I, I'm saying that uh, before I address the issue of what happened in the Utsu Senya um, yesterday, I want to, I want to tell Sami. It's that, within your uh, time. So when your time is done. Yes, that's fine. Great. Right. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Um, I want to uh, explain to Sami that um, we as a government, the new patriotic party or the Bank of Ghana, did not take those actions for Ghanaians to suffer. But it is clear that um, it is the incompetence that we experienced under the NDC government that took these financial institutions onto their knees, the way those institutions were supervised, right from the Bank of Ghana, the pressure they got from the executive to issue our bank licenses, like um, we sell granite on the streets, uh, without due diligence. The, the fact that a lot of these um, financial institutions were, were not supervised well, and so um, deposits, the, the depositors' funds were applied to some investments that were illiquid or for personal use. That is what took these financial institutions. And then we started a rescue mission in April of 2017. And that is what we are on. That's why I keep telling him that he is over three and a half years late. And um, Johnny, let, let's, let's address the issue. I, I, mm. I think that what happened in uh, Senya, um yesterday was, was not um, a matter that we should look at in isolation. It's, I, I think we should take a, a holistic view mm -hmm. of how we have treated such um, such um, 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 events mm -hmm. like registration um, um, or, or compiling a new register in the past, where mm -hmm. the political parties have all taken um, and positions, and we have agents there who have to look out for our address and all of that. Mm -hmm. I ask us as, as a candidate in, in the coming elections. Okay. It is it is my responsibility to ensure that the right things are done within mm. the registration centers in my constituency. So every blessed day, I make time to go to those registration centers just to ensure that, although I have agents, I, I also have to ensure that the right things are, are mm. being done. So it is not a matter of um, honorable how I comes in pulling a gun. I am sure that there was a consent effect. And you just read out um, 12 golden rules of handling a gun. That's right. And if if I own a gun and I have I adhere to all of those golden rules, if it's, if it's licensed, and I'm using it for self-defense. I think that um, um, it's my right to ensure that um, uh, my, my, my security, I mean, everybody's security starts immediately from around here. And if I haven't seen a video of the, the, the honorable minister shooting a gun, I have not seen that. But she uh, admitted I, shooting I, the gun. She said she shot the gun. I, I, I'm making a statement that I have not seen her. But she said she shot a gun. gun. Let, let's put both on record. I, 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 yes. Yes, I, and I'm also putting on record that I have not seen you. You mentioned that you probably I have probably seen a video, and I am saying that I have not seen a video of the honorable minister shooting a gun. Okay, it so really, I'm submitting to you that the honorable minister had admitted shooting the gun. That's settled. Let's move fair on. Fair enough. Great. That's 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 fair enough. Mm. Even if she did, even if she did, you know that all of us, the first point of our security is by ourselves. The circumstances that persisted at the registration center at the time. I wasn't there. You were also not there. I, I don't know the, 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 the extent to which the, 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 there were security and, and people there to ensure mm -hmm. that there was peace and, and quiet within the, 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 the vicinity of the registration. I am actually not there. Mm -hmm. And if even if, or, or per what you're saying, if she did admit that she, 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 she actually shot a gun, mm -hmm. she said she did that in self-defense. Are we waiting for her to be, to be killed? Are we waiting for something on tower to happen to her? Then this morning, we all be, will be here grieving and crying and that a, a minute, something had happened to a minister at the registration center. 
and and even if she shot a gun, she uh, she said she they they, they were what warning shots. Mm. And if 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 Miss Fulton um she had adhered to what what you just read up the twelve body rules mm. of handling a gun, I I I I find it difficult for for this this cause for it to be dismissed to be to be to be carried on. What we need to do is to look at this whole thing in a holistic man manner. I go to the some registration centers and in centers that are really, really not my strongholds. You go there and there are hoodlums there who even as a sitting as, as a sitting member of parliament and a candidate of the party of the NPP, mm. they want to prevent you from coming to the station. It is in your right to go there as a candidate, as a, as, as a member of parliament. It is in your right to ensure that the right things are being done at the mm -hmm. registration center. And this is your basing. I think that we, we, we need, we need, we need to- Okay, uh, we'll, we'll talk about the basing shortly. In, 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 let, let me put a question to you. We'll talk about the basing shortly, which led to the shooting of yeah. the gun. Now, she's yeah. a member of parliament pretty much like yourself. She knows that the constitutional right. instrument, which the electoral commission is using to work, allows for her to file a, a challenge form if she has any doubt about an individual's uh, you know, presence there and, and opportunity to register. Why was that option not applied? The, the, the challenge form is always an option, and, and it, it, it's been exercised across the country. If I'm not to go, I saw uh, an infograph of how many challenges had taken place in the previous eight. It's always an option. But I would say, tell you that before you even get to the stage of, 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 of being challenged or, or exercising that right under the CI, it, 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 a lot of things happen, and, and it, it, it's something that we should have a holistic look at and not just say, look at the issue of what happened in, in the Usu. Yes, it might be a starting, a starting point for us to have this, this conversation. It is the conversation that is needed, it is a conversation that is, that is actually important. For, for us as, as, as a people to have for, for, for isolation. And for, since, since this exercise started, mm. since this exercise started, probably almost almost 30 days ago, I think there, there are instances across the length and breadth of, the, of, of Ghana where this, this scaffolds happen and all of that. And so we need a holistic conversation on these processes and not just look at a Utu Senya in, in isolation. Okay, now for Zeni, let, let's look at the Utu Senya situation, for example. How Akum Singh is a member of parliament. She is also a minister of state. I do know that mm. every minister of state has a bodyguard or an aide de camp following them around mm. with a firearm. Um, she mm. also, as a member of parliament like yourself, will be part of the district uh, body that regulates activities around the district, which would include the district security council. So she has a certain rapport with the DC who manages security around the district, which will encapsulate the, uh, the constituency. She had the options. So, so many options available. And the first option was to pull a gun. And, and that's a concern out there. Do you think she did right? I, 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 will, I, will, I will also ask you to be circumspect on some of the commentary that you are making. Um, when we were in there, we are still in a place of, of what actually transpired there. But I wouldn't think that the minister will exercise the first option as, as pulling a gun. I, I, I wouldn't think so. She might have had a security person pull her around or, or take care of her personal, uh, immediate personal security at every point in time. But from what I'm gathering or what I'm hearing this mm. morning, at the time, it was so early that the security um, and, and personnel had not even taken, taken, taken their rights. Because if, if there, were, there were even security personnel at the registration center and a minister walks in, I am sure and I expect that the security personnel would actually take responsibility for the minister's um, security as she enters the registration center for mm. the time that she spends there. What actually transpired today, I don't think the minister would exercise a first option of pulling a gun without a cause and an effect. What happened yesterday, I still think that in, the, the, the details are still coming in. Okay. I should be very circumspect on the commentary that we make. Mm. I, I, I'm being circumspect, I must say, and, and I'm asking, so you, Fuseni, for example, let's say you uh, are going to your constituency registration centers and you sense danger. Your first option, wouldn't your first option be to call the district police commander, for example, and say, I'm going to polling station A, I think that it is so tensed around there. Are you able to provide security ahead 
before I get there? Is that too hard to ask? I mean, I mean, Johnny, why, why should I sense gen, the danger in my own constituency? Mm. Why should I? But for somebody perpetuating something that is illegal or somebody putting something that is treacherous to my security, I don't think I should sense danger in any part of my constituency when I'm going there. And so they need to call the district police commander or whatever before I go there. That's not even a rise. I should be. Any citizen of Ghana should be able to freely, freely walk around. And even in, in restricted places like the registration centers, I don't think that we should actually require security before we go there, unless somebody is perpetrating something that is illegal. So it's, it's neither here nor there. Should, should the I minister go? Should the minister be sacked as, is, as the calls have come in? I, I, I think that it's too early to, to make those calls. Let's, let's actually find out what, what, what actually transpired. Okay. It's too early for us to, okay. to be calling let, for a head. Let, let me bring in Sam at this point. Sam, uh, okay, so I'm sure you've seen the issues uh, flowing out now. Fuseni says we should be circumspect. Let's take our time and have a holistic conversation and not just zero in on what happened at the Honorable Awai Kumsin's uh, constituency. What do you say? Uh, thank you, Johnny. But before I deal with this issue... It's within your time. From, mm. uh, ...where Honorable Fuseni started from by setting the record straight that in 2017, when this government decided to reform the financial sector of this country, they had options available to them. They have an option to save the challenged financial institutions with just about 7 billion Ghana cities. And yet, they chose another option, which was to kill these institutions with over 20 billion Ghana cities. So these, this was a deliberate choice they made, and they must leave with the ramifications thereof and not seek to shift the blame or responsibility unfairly on President Mahama and the NDC. Mm. Honorable Fuseni, for the records, Beach Bank had its perpetual license from the Akufuado government in 2017, specifically given to them by Dr. Addison, appointed by President Akufuado. The bank was launched in 2017 by Dr. Bawunia. And so you cannot blame that on President Amma. Heritage Bank was a sovereign bank at the time its license was revoked. And so again, you cannot blame that on President Mahama as having supervised the collapse of financial institutions. Again, if President Mahama was president between 2017 and 2020, Dr. Papakwesi Indu, Dr. Dofo would have still had their business empires here. I'm referring to Gold Coast, financial institutions, and Unibank, because government would have paid the debts we owe them to them to ensure that their financial institutions got the liquidity they were looking for to inject some vibrancy in those financial Let's institutions. move on, Sam. You Let's move on. Mm. to kill, to steal, and destroy. And the destruction of these businesses, over 500 of them, has led to thousands of job losses and hardships on Ghanaians. The least you can do is to show sympathy and be truthful and stop trying to obfuscate the facts and deceive the people of this country and blame people who had nothing to do with the choices you made in collapsing these businesses. Now, having said that, let me come to this issue of gangsterism mm. involving the Minister for Special Development Initiatives and the MP for Awutu Senior East, Honorable Howard Kumsen. Johnny, I am totally scandalized Why? at the justification that Honorable Fuseni has sought to mount, you know, for this heinous crime, for this clearly indefensible, you know, act of the minister and member of parliament. Is, is it, it, is it, you, I mean, you are a lawyer. No, is it a crime yet? You are a lawyer. No, no, no. no. She has not Johnny, been charged yet. So, how does it become a crime? So, if you, if you can allow me to go to my point before the person is coming. No, I'm but I'm saying that you are a lawyer. You are saying heinous crime. She's not been charged yet. So, how do you call it a crime? 
but something must be a crime before you charge people, right? You charge people because they have committed crimes. It, it doesn't, the, that, the act doesn't become a crime after you have charged the person. You okay. charge the person because the act is criminal. Okay, let's you make can progress. Check section 198 of the Criminal Offenses Act of Ghana, 1960, mm. Act 29. Section 198, 199, 200 downwards speaks about crime against the peace of Ghana. Okay. Rioting is a crime. What the woman was engaging, and I'm going to explain all that to you. Right. So what the woman has done is criminal. What she has done is reprehensible. It is shameful. It is a blot on our democracy. It cannot be defended. And so Honorable Fuseni should stop this desperate attempt to make a woman who was admitted as having committed a crime look good. It's not going to wash. He is only destroying his reputation because we all have respect for Honorable Fuseni. We, we see him as one of the, you know, uh, the fine gentlemen in the MP. <laughs> but the fact that you are speaking for the New Patriotic Party on this platform doesn't mean that you should defend everything. What this woman has done is indefensible. It is reprehensible. It is shameful. It is criminal. And so let us describe it as such, condemn it in no uncertain terms, and ask that the laws be made to work. My brother, what are we talking about here? Tell me what you are talking about. You have about. a member of parliament mm -hmm. who goes to a polling station mm -hmm. where people are registering. Mm. There was no imminent danger mm. to her. No threats on her life. No violence at the police station before she got there. Mm -hmm. There was nothing of that sort to elicit this claim of self-defense. <laughs> there was no threat on her life. Mm -hmm. There was no violence at the said police station. She got there. According to her, and here I am referring to her own interview with Joy FM's Evans Mensa. <laughs> she got there and saw people she thought had been bashed to that police station. Mm -hmm. And what did she decide to do? She had the option to fill a challenge form and challenge the eligibility of those people who she thought were ineligible to be registered at that center because they had been passed. She could have filled the challenge form. Or if she saw that as criminal, as a member of parliament and a minister of state, she could have called the police or called the attention of the electoral officers there to prevent those people from registering. What did she do, in spite of having all these options, which have been clearly provided for under the laws of this country and our electoral systems? She decided to pull a gun, a gun she cannot identify. Pull a gun with the excuse that her bodyguard had not come to work at the time. She wasn't with the bodyguard. And so she had a gun. She was just given a gun. A gun which has not been licensed in her name. A gun she, she can't even identify and then decided to shoot according to eyewitness reports if you if you check you know um, where bullets were found and mm. where bullets bullets have penetrated and all that these were not even warning shots Tony. what these were they targeted shots targeted at the lives of their own constituents are you say are you serious are you serious I've listened to, of course i've listened to akable of joy fm speak to eyewitnesses there Bullet shells have been picked at the scene. We've seen bu bullets penetrating the shops of people. If she fired warning shots, we wouldn't have seen that evidence at the scene. So clearly, if you look at the shots which were fi fired and the manner mm -hmm. in which those shots were fired, mm -hmm. they were aimed at people, targeted at people. So why did they anybody not die? Why did anybody not get hurt if the gunshots were aimed at them? But of course, but of course, if you aim at people and you miss them, you miss your target. Nobody's going to die. People have been injured <laughs> when they miss when, when she missed her target. Mm. She, together with the gun wielding facts who invaded that police center, bent the motorcycles of innocent registrants who had come to the center to mm. register and some party agents of the NDC. These were people she met at the center. They were not holding guns. But why were you bashing were people? Not... That's the allegation, that the NDC was bashing people. Was there any bars at the center? We are not here to talk about allegations, Tony. We, we, your reporters have been there. Did you see any bars at the center? 
Has the woman been able to show us anybody who was at the center who had been buzzed there and was not eligible to be registered there? In any case, if somebody had been buzzed there, our electoral laws are clear. All you need to do is to fill a challenge form and challenge their eligibility. Or if you think that that constitutes a crime, what you need to do is to report that to the police. But for a minister of state, a lawmaker, to take the laws into her own hands in that gangster Rambo style, pull a gun, shoot at people, her own constituents, together with thugs, building guns, <laughs> destroying public property, disrupting the, the, the entire registration exercise for, for the whole day. And all that, my brother, is criminal. So her head is being called for. Her head is being called for. It cannot be defended. Her head is being called for by security experts. And, and this is my final question and to I you. I support, I support wholeheartedly those calls which are being made by the venerable Christiani, the renowned security expert, um, the, the, the other security expert you spoke to this morning, Honorable Adam Baba, Bona. Mm. And all that. I, I support them that this woman is not fit to occupy public office. She is not fit to occupy any public office of trust. And she must be given a sack today. If President Ekufuadu and his government have any integrity, any mm. honor, any conscience left, then how Kumsing must not continue to be Minister of State by 12 noon today. Will that solve the but problem? If, Will that solve the problem? Of course. Of course. When people commit offenses, they must be punished to serve as a deterrent to others. They must be punished to send a clear signal that as a country, we are peaceful, we believe in democracy, we believe in the rule of law, and we are not going to encourage this culture of impudence and impunity, which is becoming a norm under President Ekufuado. Johnny, in the last 10 half years, Wrap we up have for seen me. President mm. Ekufuado, mm. who is a lawyer, okay, and who touts himself as a paragon of the rule of law and democracy, entrench lawlessness, entrench violence how how did he do that how did he do that how did he do that by election we and we saw the state sponsored terror and brutalities which were meted to innocent civilians for which reason today people have been maimed people have been inca uh, 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 incapacitated by that unwarranted unprovoked violence they suffered till date the perpetrators have been left off the hook we've seen tags from the mpp attacks courts of this land Okay. We've seen them attack state institutions and all that. Thank you. But you see, what happened at Kaswa, if I can wrap up, Johnny, is 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 like none is like is like nothing we have seen in the last three and a half years. Mm. What happened is unprecedented. What happened is criminal, it is shameful, it is reprehensible, it is condemnable. And the woman must be stuck for that. But if for any reason. Okay, thank you. President thank you. To shield her. Your your time your time is on. Uh, Fuseni, you have the air now. Uh, take a bite quickly on, on this one. Let's go for some messages Johnny, and switch. Mm. Johnny, uh, it's it's amazing how uh, my co-panelist Sami describes the situation that pertained at um, the time this incident is supposed to have happened in in Kasua. Um, I am sure that uh, the, 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 there are some investigations underway by now. Mm. And um, as to the extent of threat, the extent of danger she, she actually envisaged, as to the gun, whether she owned it, uh, licensing, and whether it was targeted. I mean, mm. it would be quite obnoxious and very um, 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 absurd that a minister of state gets into a registration center, takes a gun, and starts targeting at people. I'm sure it's another opportunity for the NDC, as we have known, to to explore this for their own parochial gains. I, I think that it's, it's shameful that they 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 will want to absorb themselves from 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 what is happening in this process. I, what I am saying this morning is that we as a people we need to actually have a conversation on how we have undertaken some of the things. In the past, it happened. How do, how do you propose uh, we start uh, the conversation? Uh, uh, how do you propose we start a conversation? Should we make example of people I, 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 so I, that I, we I can use that I, as a basis that, to start a conversation? I I, I, I think that as as a nation, we we, we have we, we've been talking and grappling with how to get um, um a, a one point uh, um, um, database for for, for, for nationals or citizens. 
And, and if we are able to do this in a continuous fashion, such that anybody um, who is born has an ID, you get to the age 18, you opt to vote in an election, and so you go to the EC's office, and it's a continuous process. We wouldn't have to wait to do this mass registrations where, because of the stakes, tensions will be there, and if not managed, incidents could happen. Mm. This is not an incident in isolation, right. because I have been active in this process. Maybe Sami is not, but me as a candidate, I have been very active, and it could happen in any registration center. And so we need to have a holistic view of this thing, have a conversation. We go beyond processes like this, mass restriction, because we have a database. Okay. We can, we can, now, Rafa Saini, finally. No, 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 no. Sami, I'll come to you. Sami, I'll come to you. I'll come to you. Fuseni, now we know that the Banda story, for example, where the young man lost his life. This, these are just dress rehearsals, registration exercise, and we are reading all of these things. Uh, what Should we be scared for December 7th? I, 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 I don't think so. I, I, don't, I don't think so because these are, um, this are yes, um, um, incidents that are happening in isolation. They are not, um, uh, but potentially they could happen across. What I'm saying is that um, we, we, we shouldn't, uh, because they, it's not the first time we're having this. And that is not, not to mm. rationalize the, the, the occurrence of such incidents. Okay. But, but we, we need to, 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 to exercise some restraint. All right. um, as a people, I mean, we all know the stakes are very high. And mm. in and, and, and environments where the stakes are this high, and potentially we could have isolated incidents like this. Grateful. But we shouldn't at all. Thank this, you. This should not at all be, 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 be any, any, any um, um, indication of um, um, some, some mm. doom that is Okay, specifically, so thank you. Uh, Sami, we'll they, very... Sami they, they, uh, the dress rehearsal does appear to be recording such pockets of violence. Uh, Fuseni says they are isolated cases. Should we be scared for December 7 as a political party from where you sit? Yes, we should be very worried as uh, stakeholders in this democratic experiment. But even before I say that, I, I explain that. Let me tell my brother Fuseni that we don't need any conversation on this matter. Mm. What we need is the enforcement of our laws. Enough of the talk. Let us set examples, you know, with ministers of state, public officials, and tax hoodlums who have decided to take the laws of this country into their own hands, met out brutalities on innocent civilians, intimidate people, even engage in gun violence, and, and, and commit crimes against the laws of this country. What we need is to crack the whip on such people, make an example of them to serve as a deterrent to others. The only way we can ensure law and order, the mm. only way we can ensure peace is by enforcing our laws, prosecuting those we need to prosecute, punishing crime. That is the only way we can deal with this canker. Thank you. This government promised the youth of this country jobs. They promise us development. If they have failed to do so, let them not organize the youth of this country and the people of this country for such, you know, violent... You, you, don't, you don't know that for a fact. Thank you very much, Sami Jeffy. And uh, I will have to mute you at this point. Thank you. Uh, Etanam, you have the floor. WhatsApp this morning and a civilian has fired gunshots at a public place. She's admitted doing that. This, uh, we all know, is unacceptable. Yet another person is on TV trying to rationalize the action because they belong to the same political party. A Ghana, a who from Barre, Abbas in Amogobo offense. So how, have, how has Ghana turned into a failed and lawless country like this? How can Honorable Minister fire gunshots when she was not under any attack? We see how the police will deal with this criminal behavior. Walanya well, Inakwetia says, let us maintain the peace. We are enjoying all this while, and petty politics should not divide us as a country. I saw Sami Jemfit's t-shirt written boldly on it, the rescue mission, me, gracious me. Good morning, TV3. Are we really safe in this country? This minister must resign honorably to save the, her image. No well-meaning Ghanaian will support what the minister did. We must condemn this lawless act, devoid of politics. Dollar send that from Shia. Good morning, Johnny. I'm watching you live, and it's a great morning 
show bless sap what i am trying to understand is why such a figure should use a gun at a public place hmm, it is well fighting over registration centers all points of fighting for votes to either come into power or stay in power patriotism is almost going scarce god help ghana in africa good morning johnny tell my brother sami i love the t-shirt and really need one where can i get it i'm already part of the rescue mission i need sami jenfi's uh, number Johnny, tell the MPP man to speak the truth. Kumsin should go. Cashman sent that. Hi, Johnny. Did I hear the MPP man saying that it was self-defense? Honorable Fusaini should leave above reproach. He should stop defending the wrongdoing. John Avogbedo in Takrade. Good morning, Johnny. What happened at Ewutu Senya was really an eyesore. But if Hawa Kumsin gave warning shots, I think she probably did so out of defense or sending a signal the police would have sent if they were around from Div Gayla in Tema. Good morning, TV3. The excesses taking place at the ongoing registration centers is causing fear and panic and heightening tension in the country. Government should deploy more forces at the registration centers to curb these tensions. Say, Godfly, send that from Cochrane to me. That'll be for the messages on WhatsApp this morning. Thank you. Mr. Thank you. Mr. Let's switch now and uh, get into the, today's day two of our WASI exam, as we know it. Um, and, and some figures have come up there. The the year on year analysis of numbers of WASI candidates since 2017. I present to you uh, in 2016, for example, 274,263 sat for the exam. At the time, there was no free SHS. In 2017, 289,207 sat for the exam. That represents an increase of 5.4%. And there was no free SHS exam, even though the free SHS policy had kicked in at the time. In 2018, 316,985 candidates sat for the exam. That's a shoot up from 5.4% uh, to 6.9.6%. 6 there was no free SHS exam at the time. 2009, 346,098, uh, I beg your pardon, candidates sat. That's a shoot, uh, a drop, I beg your pardon, 9.2%. There was no free SHS. But in 2020, we have 375,737 candidates, uh, which is a drop. 8.6% from 9.2, and there's a first free SHS exam. Now, the key question I'm asking, and I'll put that to Sami Jemfi at this point, I'm sure you've seen the figures from the side of government that the free SHS policy has indeed doubled the enrollment figures, and we should translate in the numbers of candidates that are sitting for the WASI. Now, the SHS was to be free for all 40, 468,053 candidates who had sat for the BEC. Uh, at the time in 2016 and gone on in 2017. Now, today we have been told that 375,737 candidates are sitting for that. What is remaining is 92,316. That's what is lost. Could there be school dropouts? What do you think? What have you been seeing looking into your crystal ball? Uh, thank you very much, Johnny. Um, let me just make this passing comment that if calls for the dismissal, the arrest and prosecution of Hawa Kumsen is ignored. And she's left off the hook, like several other criminals like Double have been left off the hook by this government. A future NDC government will ensure that she is prosecuted and punished for this heinous crime. A day of accountability and reckoning will surely come, and that day is coming very soon. Now, to answer this question, John, the statistics, the data on the number of students who are sitting for this year's, I don't know whether to call it WASI exams or, or, I mean, secondary school examination, let's call it, you know, so, underlines the shambolic implementation of the free SHS that we in the opposition have continuously highlighted. Because we, we've said that a policy can be good, but if it is not well implemented, the objectives of the policy will be defeated. And that is what has happened to this laudable policy of free SHS. Good policy, but shambolic implementation. And so the dividends we were supposed to reap as a country have eluded us. Look at just, I'm going to give you just three indices. Number mm -hmm. one, in 2017, September, mm -hmm. 362,000 students enrolled 
under the free SHS policy. I'm not talking about those who were placed but failed to enroll. I am okay. talking about those who actually enrolled, reported mm. for school, 362,000. Right. As we speak today, only 313,000 of that number are writing the WASI examination. And here I'm focusing on WASI candidates from public schools. Okay. And so when you do the mathematics, you see a decline of about 50,000 students. Mm. Now, you ask the question, and I want to, you know, retreat that question, that what has happened to this, these 50,000 students? We know that just about 20,000 of them are under the NAPTES scheme, the vocational and technical, you know, uh, 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 program. Mm. And so you still have another 30,000 of these students who were unable to complete secondary school, in spite of the fact that we are implementing free SHS and we are spending huge sums of money on that. Your point is what could have accounted for that? Mm. What has accounted for this high rate of drop drop out? Mm. It's because of the haphazard implementation <laughs> of the free SHS, the haphazard placement of secondary school students, mm. some of whom were posted to far places where there were no boarding facilities and had to rent accommodation, pay for their transportation and all that. Because these students did not have the money mm. to hire accommodation and to cope with the high cost associated mm. with that, most of them dropped out of school. And that is what is accounted and, for. And you know that I, for a fact. You know, of, but I mean, what could have accounted for that? That you, the cost impediment has been removed. Students have been admitted. They are enjoying free SHS. And yet you have in excess of 30,000 of them dropping out. Certainly, all the, these 30,000 students have not repeated. All these 30,000 students have not died. They have dropped out of school. And there should be a cause for that. And I'm telling you that the cause is that even though we are saying secondary school education is free, it, mm. it has not been free in the last three and a half years because of the symbolic implementation, which has imposed other financial burdens on parents okay. and students. Okay, thank and you. that is what is accounting for this high attrition rate. Finally, finally, look at the fact that between 2012 mm. and 2016, we saw a 57.2% increment in the completion numbers. In 2012, when President Mahama assumed office, you had just about 174,000 students sitting for WASI, the WASI mm. examination, 174,000. Okay. In four years, we mm. increased that number to 274,262. Bottom line. Which represents a 57.2%. Bottom line. Yet this government, mm. in spite of all the noise and chest beating, has only supervise a 37% increment in completion numbers. So if you compare their record to the record of President Mahama, who didn't even boast of the full implementation of free SHS, we did far better Thank you. increasing completion Okay, your numbers. point finally, is well noted. Finally. Thank you. Uh, no, finally, uh, finally, finally. Fuseni, no, but then, you can't say finally three times. It's okay. Uh, Fuseni, you have the floor. <laughs> you have the floor now. <laughs> finally, um, finally, finally, finally. Thank you, Fuseni. Fuseni, where, where are the remaining I, I, students? Uh, we saw the enrollment figures. Johnny, Johnny, finally, finally. Oh, no, you can't say finally, Johnny, finally. Johnny, let's, I beg let's you. Let's look at the trends. Uh, Johnny, Johnny, let's, let's look at the trends. And when we look at the trends, we could actually make some sense of what is happening. If, if you look at the stats, just as you have read, in, in 2015, there was an increment of um, 26,614, mm. which represented an increase of of 10.99%. Um, right. In 2016, there was an increase of 5,492. I'm referring to the entries into the WASI exam, which represented an increase of 2.04. And then in 2017, there was an increase of 14,944, mm. which represented an increment on the, on the, on the previous year of 5.45. Mm. So whilst we had an increase of 10.99 in 2015, we had only 2.04 in 2016. Mm. In 2017, we have 5.45. So the trend is not something uh, uh, that definite for us to expect that every year there has to be a 10% jump. But, but the where are the students? Fuseni, the enrollment figures, the enrollment figures and those sitting for the I'm exam making, doesn't I'm reconcile. Making, I'm making sense of the trend. Okay. Sorry. Hello. Yes, yes, you're live. I'm looking for the, the missing yes, figures. In 2018, in, in 2018, we had an increment of 9.61. And then in, in 2019, an increment of 9.18. When there was no free speech. And then in 2020, 
And then in 2020, we have had an increment of 8.56. A decline. Uh, Even with free SHS. That we are looking at. Yes. The decline, the decline did not start in 2020. I, I set up I set up in 2015 to explain that even in 2015, where there was no free SHS, in 2016 there was no free SHS. The, 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 the increment declined from an increase of 10.9 by an increment of 20. Uh, Fuseni, this, this explanation you are giving to me, Fuseni, in 2017, all the impediments of costs and the lack of teachers were taking off according to the government so why do we still have these situations i mean the government told us prior to the implementation of the free shs policy that all these implementations of cost of access of quality were going to be taken off and they gave us a number at the start point why are we not seeing the same number at the finish point yes some may have uh, may have repeated some may have fallen sick but that number is quite huge don't you think the, 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 that's why we are looking at the trend, the, the, the trend situation. What trend? This is the first time we are having free SHS. So I you am, cannot I be am, talking about the trend. I'm, what, I'm, what, I'm, what I'm saying is that... Uh, Sami, allow him. We, we have had issue. We, have, uh, we, we, we will say that um, from, the, from the inception of a, a policy like free SHS, we are going to get everything everything on the, on the, on the spot. Mm. And so we have known that over the last three years or so, Every year we have had new learnings and we are going to perfect this policy over time. What I would expect from our brothers on the other side at this point. For saying you have not told me where the missing numbers are. Where are the missing numbers? If you need policy alternatives, we have a lot for you. We have a lot of policy alternatives for you. Well, I, I'm not I'm not getting my answer, so we have to go. I'm sorry about that. Uh, but Honorable Fusaini Issa is a member of parliament for the good people of the Okankwe North constituency in the Greater Accra region. Sami Jenfi is also the national communications officer of the NDC.